U.S. regulators have allowed emergency use of the first drug that appears to help some COVID-19 patients recover faster, a milestone in the global search for effective therapies against coronavirus. Remdesivir reduced the time patients were in the hospital by 31% to 11 days on average versus 15 days for those given just usual care. Preliminary results have found. How exactly does it work inside the patient? How early should the intervention be? I speak with Dr. George Diaz, who's the first US doctor to treat a patient diagnosed with COVID-19. Dr. Diaz is currently investigating the use of remdesivir in a clinical trial, and his experience with US patient number one was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Uh, our uh, story uh, in Everett began uh, in, uh, on January 20th. Uh, at that point, uh, we had uh, the first uh, confirmed patient with uh, COVID-19 uh, in our county. Uh, we immediately were contacted by the CDC who uh, recommended that we admit the patient for observation to our hospital. Uh, while he was admitted to the hospital, uh, he initially had uh, symptoms typical of COVID-19 with fever, uh, cough, uh, and generalized fatigue. Uh, he intermittently had diarrhea as well. A few days into his illness, the patient developed pneumonia. Uh, he developed shortness of breath, uh, and he developed low oxygen levels uh, when we checked his oxygen levels uh, on a pulse oximetry. Uh, because of these findings, we suspected that he had progressed to uh, pneumonia secondary to COVID. Uh, and at that point, uh, with the CDC expertise on hand, uh, they suggest that we consider the use of remdesivir. Uh, we had recently gotten reports out of China that a large number of patients uh, progressed to uh, severe pneumonia as well as a need for uh, care in the intensive unit, intensive care unit. Uh, because of this, we reviewed uh, this data from China uh, with the patient as well as uh, the use of remdesivir. Uh, it had not yet been previously used in patients uh, with COVID-19. However, uh, had been tested in um, healthy volunteers uh, during the uh, Ebola outbreak. Uh, at that time, the drug appeared to be safe, but unfortunately was not very active against the Ebola virus disease. Uh, so we could at least provide to the patient uh, some safety data regarding the medication. Uh, in addition, there had been uh, relatively recently released studies looking at the use of remdesivir in animal models, uh, and it appeared to uh, reduce the effect of the virus uh, in the lung in these animals. Uh, for these reasons, the patients uh, agreed to receive uh, remdesivir, uh, and uh, Gilead, uh, the manufacturer, and the FDA were able to provide it to us uh, with under compassionate use. Uh, because of the, the proximity of Gilead to Seattle, we were able to receive the drug and begin infusing uh, the medication within 24 hours. Uh, before infusion, the patient had been having uh, high-grade fevers uh, and uh, low oxygen levels, uh, and uh, we infused it uh, that day. Uh, he did not have any symptoms from the infusion itself, uh, and by the next day, uh, the patient felt much better overall. Uh, his fevers uh, significantly improved and, and the patient stayed a fever all the rest of the time he was in the hospital. Uh, he did not have any ill effects from the antiviral uh, and he was able to come off oxygen within about 24 hours. Uh, within about uh, five days of the first dose, he was able to uh, discharge to home uh, and he was sent home on home quarantine with, um, under the care of the, the county health department. Uh, and uh, since then, he's done quite well and uh, has had no apparent sequelae from the infection uh, after discharge. Uh, after uh, the patient uh, went home, uh, we began seeing uh, larger numbers of patients within uh, our county and our area, which is Western Washington. Uh, and over the next few weeks, uh, began uh, adding patients uh, to a treatment uh, through the Compassionate Use Program uh, with Gilead. Uh, and then after a few weeks in early March, uh, Gilead uh, was able to help us stand up a clinical trial here in our area uh, at both Providence and Swedish Medical Center uh, for treatment of patients with severe pneumonia. Uh, we uh, have been uh, treating patients who present with uh, a pneumonia on x-ray, uh, low oxygen levels, uh, less than 94%, uh, 
uh, and a, a positive uh, COVID test. Uh, we uh, have enrolled quite a few patients since the, the volume of patients in our area has uh, has had significantly increased as we were one of the first epicenters of the pandemic in the U.S. Um, on treatment with remdesivir, uh, we have um, we have seen uh, little in the way of substantial side effects from treating large numbers of patients. Uh, the the primary symptom really is nausea occurring in, in less than 10% of patients. Uh, there are some exclusion criteria for use of the drug, uh, and that's limited our ability to give some patients uh, this medication. And th the primary reason for not providing this medication has been due to uh, uh, abnormally low uh, kidney function. Uh, otherwise, we have uh, primarily been using it in patients who have uh, COVID pneumonia. Uh, after the first uh, 400 patients were enrolled, uh, the company uh, added uh, the option to use uh, remdesivir in patients on the ventilator. Uh, prior to that, we weren't able to enroll patients who uh, were already on the ventilator when, uh, when we received them for care. Um, in the past um, uh, week or so, uh, there has been some data that's come out uh, from the NIH uh, on their trial, uh, which has uh, indicated the, um, the, the uh, recovery time uh, for COVID-19 patients is, is reduced uh, by roughly four days. Uh, uh, they, they may also be seeing a mortality benefit, although that's not yet been published, uh, and that they're undergoing further analysis uh, of their patients to make that determination. Uh, in addition, the, the Gilead, uh, the manufacturer of remdesivir, also last week uh, announced uh, some top line results uh, from their uh, pneumonia trial, which indicated that uh, five days of therapy of, with remdesivir pneumonia appears to be equivalent to 10 days of uh, remdesivir uh, in pneumonia. They also added additional um, data as well in their press release that indicated that patients who received remdesivir early, uh, meaning during the first 10 days of symptoms, uh, were more likely to uh, discharge the hospital than those that were started uh, after 10 days of symptoms had elapsed. Uh, the difference in, in the ability to discharge to the hospital uh, was measured at 13%. Uh, given these findings, uh, the uh, FDA uh, has granted uh, emergency use authorization for the use of remdesivir uh, in patients with uh, severe pneumonia. Uh, so uh, with respect to the, the findings in our patients uh, that made us feel that he was improving, uh, he had uh, his fevers entirely resolved. So he no longer had fevers uh, during the admission. Uh, prior to treatment with remdesivir, he was having fevers as high as 103 degrees Fahrenheit, 39 degrees Celsius. Uh, thereafter, his temperatures remained roughly uh, 37 degrees Celsius. Uh, he was also able to come off of oxygen, so he no longer needed oxygen supplementation uh, to maintain, maintain his saturations above 94%. Uh, in addition, he generally felt much better, uh, like he was uh, resolving the infection, uh, and he no longer felt short of breath. Uh, those were the three sort of features that we saw that, that made us feel that he was improving. Uh, with respect to early treatment, um, with the uh, clinical trial that we've been involved in, the inclusion criteria uh, is uh, the presence of a, a, a pneumonia on x-ray, uh, the uh, positive uh, COVID result. Um, and also uh, the finding of hypoxemia, uh, meaning a saturation of 94% or less. And so uh, those are the criteria that we use to uh, enroll patients into the SEVERE trial. Uh, in, our, in our institution and in, in our health system, uh, the majority of patients that would have qualified for the other trial, the moderate trial, uh, for example, those patients that had saturations above 94%, the, the vast majority of those patients were able to go home. Uh, and preliminarily, uh, very few of them appear to be returning to the hospital, and those are uh, data that we're looking at to try to identify uh, these people that don't have severe disease, uh, can, you know, can they go home? Uh, with respect to remdesivir and severe pneumonia, uh, at our institutions, we would, as rapidly as, as possible, when they made the, met these inclusion criteria, we would start them on remdesivir. And ideally, uh, the, 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 the treatment would begin uh, as soon as those criteria are met. 
um, and oftentimes those were within uh, 10 days of symptom onset. Uh, and frequently they were usually around day five or so of symptom onset. Uh, after about day 10 of symptoms, uh, we, we can see a dramatic worsening of, of symptoms with progressive respiratory failure uh, and requirement uh, for mechanical ventilation, for example. Uh, and so what the Gilead severe study uh, appeared to show is that patients that were started uh, on treatment uh, before that 10th day of symptoms, that cohort of patients uh, had a higher likelihood of being able to be discharged to home, uh, meaning I think, you know, partly clinical success. Uh, uh, Dr. Tony Fauci uh, uh, of the uh, NIH had indicated that, that remdesivir didn't appear to be a knockout 100% drug, uh, but it did in his hands have uh, uh, effect, uh, that it did have the ability to stop the virus, and they saw an improvement in recovery times. Uh, we have this therapeutic uh, now here, uh, and because the FDA has uh, uh, provided emergency use authorization, uh, it will become available uh, worldwide uh, very shortly, and Gilead is working with local governments to, to provide this medication to those patients most in need. Um, vaccine work often takes uh, over a year to determine its safety uh, and effectiveness, and within the U.S., there's many uh, vaccine trials that are ongoing and enrolling patients uh, already. Uh, we're hopeful that within a year we'll have a vaccine uh, in the interim period, it's important to uh, find any therapies that, that we may have uh, available for treatment of COVID, uh, and remdesivir appears to be uh, one that does have activity against the virus. The, the largest side effect that we've seen is it has been nausea. Uh, at my center, uh, we did not have to discontinue uh, that medication uh, for that reason. Uh, other side effects that one can see include uh, transient rises in the liver function tests of a patient. Uh, in our experience uh, locally, uh, those rises have been relatively uh, mild uh, and, and not, uh, have not needed discontinuation of the drug. Uh, we also know that COVID-19 by itself also uh, can cause liver from inflammation as well. Uh, and so it's a little unclear uh, what the interplay between drug and the viruses in the liver. Uh, but uh, in inflammation of the liver can also be a, a, another side effect. Uh, but the, the, the issue that, that most commonly uh, excludes patients uh, from uh, remdesivir has been uh, abnormal renal function. Uh, and we have uh, many patients who are elderly uh, that present to the hospital uh, dehydrated uh, and have uh, borderline renal function to receive the drug. Uh, and so there are quite a few patients where uh, we've enrolled them uh, and, and their kidney function has just barely been uh, adequate for uh, treatment with remdesivir. Uh, we've seen similar results in those patients that have received treatment. And generally speaking, we haven't seen substantial uh, increases in uh, abnormal renal function after starting uh, treatment with remdesivir, even in those patients. Uh, but that would be another concern is in patients at risk for renal disease, uh, they could potentially need to discontinue the medication due to renal, renal uh, issues. Well, what we have seen in, in our uh, hospitals is that patients may present with mild symptoms initially, uh, for example, no pneumonia and x-ray uh, and normal oxygen levels, but symptomatic. Uh, in, in the patients that are high risk, meaning those people that are age over 60 or have illnesses that, are, that places them at high risk for disease, uh, those patients within our health system, we've been uh, discharging them uh, with uh, pulse oximetry and telehealth monitoring. So we have uh, telehealth nurses that will uh, contact them by phone or by video uh, to uh, talk to them, to see how they're doing, to, to interview them, uh, and also to measure their uh, vital signs, including their oxygen saturations. Uh, the, the purpose of this is to try to detect uh, any changes early before a patient becomes ill enough to uh, warrant uh, ICU level care. So we want to detect the change uh, at the earliest stage uh, of uh, when, when someone develops what we would consider severe illness. Uh, a large majority of these patients who are discharged from the emergency department who have COVID uh, end up having mild disease. And so what we want to know is in the patients that uh, are in this category that they have, don't qualify for admission and don't qualify for remdesivir, can we find the ones that are, are going to become sick uh, and get them back into the hospital as quickly as possible. And so one way of keeping close track of our patients uh, is to monitor them actively outside the hospital with oxygen levels and, and vital signs and history taking. 
uh, to safely bring them in as soon as we see a change in the condition that would warrant admission uh, and potentially treatment with remdesivir.